beyond our borders. Friends, this is what it's all about. We've been talking about it for three weeks now, going beyond our borders. And our focus has been to invite all of us to venture out beyond the physical space of Wesley, out into God's creation. And I really, truly believe that Jesus calls us to look beyond the borders of our campus into the world because that's the way Jesus lived his life. I also believe that includes more than just our physical borders or boundaries. It includes our emotional and even our spiritual borders as well. Literally getting out of our comfort zones of where we might feel that we are most safe, out beyond those borders and into the world. Because think about this. What might our world truly look like? What would it really look like if we lived into the vision Jesus had for us in this world? Going beyond our borders to offer the love of God through Jesus Christ. We've been exploring that the past few weeks. Our first Sunday, two weeks ago, we looked beyond our borders to the South African country of Mozambique. And we rediscovered that we had actually had a long commitment with a community in Mozambique. We'd kind of drifted apart. And so we have reestablished our relationship with the United Methodist community of Venculos. And we have discovered that the children and families in that United Methodist community have a need They don't have any water in their community. They have to travel and they have to walk long distances to get fresh water every day. And they've asked for a well to be dug. And we've committed as United Methodist Church to help fulfill that need. We heard on that Sunday where Jesus said, those who drink of the water that I give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. And then for good measure, Jesus added, and let anyone who is thirsty Come to me, for out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. And so we're taking those words to heart. We're also taking them literally. We've made a commitment now to provide before the end of this calendar year, before December 31st, the funds that are needed to dig a well to provide fresh water for our sister community, to provide water for the Villanculos children and those families so they can have vibrant healthy water literally at their fingertips and our gift of love will change lives as i said two weeks ago what a great christmas gift amen Amen. and to think it all began when we looked beyond our border in fact i have no doubt if jesus was here today he'd be saying now that's what i'm talking about fresh water for kids And then last Sunday, we learned about the great need in the Central American country of Nicaragua, where families live on the just the barest of income. Very minimal, inadequate housing, huts really that they live in, with little or no protection from the elements. And through the Rainbow Network, we are committing to build a covenant partnership with the children and the family of the Pan Corva community in Nicaragua. The Pan Corva community is uh, is a group of United Methodist uh, church homes. And by going beyond our border, we're going to change lives for children in Nicaragua. In fact, Pastor Stacy and one of our church members, Megan Munzlinger, who also works with the Rainbow Network, they're going to lead a group from Wesley the first of next year in 2017 to help rebuild our relationship with the Pan Corva community. And if you want to know more about that, we're going to be providing a lot of information in the weeks ahead. And then today, in these worship experiences, the Children of the World Choir has truly blessed each and every one of our lives with their phenomenal voices, the beautiful gift of their singing. And this morning, we have an opportunity to bless others far beyond our border with the special gifts that we have given to the Children of the World International Rescue Project. What our gift will provide today is funds to reach out to children who are being rescued and treated to restore their lives because they've been suffering from um, living on the streets, drinking dirty water, malnutrition, and just living in in poverty. Our gift this morning is a life-changing experience, not only for us in our giving, but in the children that we'll be receiving, merely because we're willing to go beyond our border. So why even go beyond our border? I'm glad you asked that. Because truly, Jesus told us to go. When we look in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, Jesus very clearly instructed his, his followers to go out into the nations. In another Gospel, Jesus said in Mark 16, he said to all Christ followers, go into the world. 
Go beyond your border, the confines of where you live, where you feel comfortable. Go into the world. And so following this example, we have chosen to go beyond our border into God's world, remembering those wonderful words that's proclaimed in the Gospel of John 3.16. We go into the world because God loves the world, and we love the world. God so loved the world, in fact, that God sent God's only begotten Son, only created Son, and whoever believes in Him will never perish but have eternal life. Because God did not send Jesus into this world to condemn it, but that the world might be saved through him. It's important to really understand what this scripture means. Do we fully understand the the ramifications, the implications of this biblical promise from John 3.16 and John 3.17? What it really means is God created, not for God's own amusement, but out of love, God has created all that we have ever known and know and, and will ever know. God is the supreme power of everything. We call that omnipotence, God's all-powerfulness. And as people of faith, we believe that there exists nothing greater than God and the power of God. And when we think about how powerful God is and how, how vast all of creation is from the very center of the planet on which we live and beyond our border into the reaches around the world and into the galaxy and all into infinity. It was all created by God. That's amazing. God has made it all. And it all truly belongs to God. We merely have a privilege to be stewards, to be caretakers of what God has given us. No matter what generation we are in, whether you're young or middle-aged or old, we have a responsibility to take care of what God has entrusted us with. It is God who has blessed us with community, with this church, and with family. So how fitting in this week ahead as we begin to gather families to ask the Lord's blessing, as we begin this week of Thanksgiving, pausing from our labor and and as the families gather and probably way too much food is, is prepared and prayers are offered, how fitting it is that we should give thanks to God for all that God has done, to give God all the praise, all the thanks, all the glory, and for all the many blessings in our lives. Amen? Because God so loves the world and everything that's in it. People of all ages and shapes and colors and sizes and beliefs and non-beliefs. People that do the most awful things and say the awful things. And people who try every day to live as godly as they can. God so loves the entire world that God sent us a gift. And a gift is the Son, Jesus Christ. And he sent us the gift of Jesus so that Jesus could teach us how to live and how to love one another. And all who believe in what it is that Jesus offers, which is supreme divine love and and salvation, will never experience spiritual death. Hmm. But indeed will have life eternal with God. We don't know what that's like yet. It's a very mysterious yet profound experience. We've not yet been revealed to us. I really am thankful for all that God has done in my life. I'm so very thankful And so, as we prepare in a few days to experience and observe a a day of thanks, for what are you thankful? And I want you to just speak it out loud right now. For what are you thankful? I am thankful that God loves us no matter what. That's a biblical promise made in the Bible, that neither life nor death or war or famine or sword or There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus. Nothing that a person can do or say or believe or not believe will ever cause God to stop loving no matter what. And so I'm thankful that God loves us no matter what. I'm also thankful that that God calls us beyond our comfort zone, beyond our borders, out into the world to share the knowledge that God loves us no matter what, to share the love of Christ with others. You know, we at Wesley, we uh, intentionally created a vision on how we see ourselves living into the mission that God calls us to do. So God says, get out into the world and make more disciples, make more people who understand this love I have through Jesus Christ. 
And so we've created a vision that calls us to reach out to our neighbors, the neighbors across the street, the neighbors who live next door in the housing apartments, across James River in the subdivision, and even beyond, across town, across the state, throughout the country, indeed throughout the world community, God calls us to reach out beyond our border in order to change the lives of others in the name of Jesus. I think that's a privilege to be able to change this world not in my name, but in Jesus' name. And so we're living that out in our own community of reaching, building, and connecting through things like our community garden. I can't talk enough about this community garden and this group of wonderful human beings that said we get the new vision and here's how we're going to reach and build and connect is through a garden on our campus here. And so in our first year alone, we just started it spring of this year, People came together, not only Wesley people, but community people came across the uh, Republic Road and dug in the dirt together and planted seed. And after a, a fine season, we've now harvested more than a ton and a half of food, all of which has been donated, all one and a half tons, to a local food pantry to be given away free to people who are in need. Other ways that we are reaching, building, and connecting, going beyond our borders is we've had events on our lawn this summer. I don't know if you've noticed, we had a huge spring event right around Easter. We had a a big fall event. We even had a movie night out there where you could come sit on the lawn and watch a movie. And it wasn't for us. We were the hosts. It was for our community, anybody that wanted to come. Next summer, we're really going to go beyond our comfort zone and beyond the border of the walls of this church as we offer vacation Bible camp out on our lawn. And it's going to be wonderful. Our reaching, our building and connecting has been demonstrated through going beyond the borders of this church to York and elementary, uh, Campbell Elementary Schools, offering ministry there, going beyond our borders to support the downtown church as it grows, uh, helping with Cross Lines, Harmony House, Ozark Food Harvest, Rainbow Network, Rare Breed, Well of Life, our Mission Blitz that we do every year, Northwest Springfield, and so many more things. As we get beyond our border, beyond our boundary, beyond our comfort zone, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you, I just feel so, so blessed and so thankful to serve as your pastor because of your willingness, your sacrifices, your enthusiasm to go beyond the border of this campus and into the community and even indeed into our world. But here's the good news. Our work has just begun. We have a lot of phenomenal ministry planned in all the time ahead. As we go beyond our border to Mozambique, you know, we're going to get that well dug. I can't imagine what it's going to mean for those children. I can't wait to see pictures of these families that have access to free, fresh water because we have been blessed and we're willing to be a blessing to others in Mozambique. And we're just now learning how we can change the lives of children in Nicaragua as we help with a family down there and the families of Pancorva and change their lives, blessing them from the blessings that we receive. How we're changing the lives of children, the Children of the World Rescue Project this morning, giving of ourselves in order to make a difference in the lives of children. We really can make a huge difference in this world in Christ's name. And I think... The best way to express our, able, our ability to bless others from the blessings that we have received is to thank God for those blessings. Thank you, God, for blessing me in such abundance that I can bless others. What a privilege. That I can be the hands and the heart and the feet and the voice of Jesus in today's world. One of my favorite passages in the Bible comes from the Psalms, Psalm 138. It's a longer psalm. I'm not going to read it all. I invite you to Get out your phone and look it up, or when you get home, look it up. Psalm 138, it opens with these simple words. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. And I hope as we begin to look at Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, as we prepare for a a day of rest on Thursday, a day of Thanksgiving, that we will all give thanks to God with our whole heart. I know you might be experiencing things in your life right now and you think, well, it may be Thanksgiving week. I'm not sure I can be thankful. Some of you have experienced illnesses or broken relationships or deaths or illness, just all those things that that come at us and we think, I don't know if I'm thankful. I don't know. We can always be thankful to God. For the very least, for this church community, 
for the boldness to go beyond the confines of this church into the community, for the sacred breath that God gives us each and every day. No matter how dark our lives may look, there's always hope. Hope that we can change lives of each other and the lives of children through the simple act of generosity and prayer and love. There was a fellow named Henry Smith. He's a writer. And uh, several years ago, he was going blind. He had an illness, irreparable damage, and he was going, slowly going blind. And he was a lyricist. And so he wrote the words to a hymn that are very familiar to most of us. As he was going blind, he wrote this hymn of thanks to God. Here are the words that Henry Smith wrote. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. And now let the weak say we are strong. Let the poor say we are rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Will you pray with me? Lord, we give you thanks for the sacredness of life, for the opportunity to step into Jesus' shoes and be his heart, his voice, his hands, his love in this world. God, we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. <clears throat> we live each day with that hope that the day that will come and be done will be a day when we see a world of peace and love. So let there be peace on earth, O oh God, and let it begin with me. And all of God's people say,